using a, a crystal as a, an oscillator source uh, provides a very high frequency and a very accurate um, oscillator. Um, I've got a driver circuit here and uh, it's to drive one of these crystals because by themselves um, they aren't really of any use because they you they won't just oscillate by themselves they need they provide a very low power source of oscillation so you need something which will amplify them and this driver circuit will amplify anything um up to 25 megahertz i think it'll probably uh, oscillate a 50 megahertz crystal uh f from this point of view but uh, over this side of the circuit it won't handle the 50 megahertz uh but i'll talk you through the circuit so You've got a crystal over here, and I've I've made my circuit so you can plug in different uh, various crystals. Uh, and the crystal requires a couple of capacitors um, in order to to tune uh, the oscillations uh, in order to keep it as a, a um, very stable oscillating frequency, which is the the frequency uh, that the crystal is designed for. Um, uh, so here I found that actually anything up to twenty five megahertz, you you can use one. Uh, one picofarad um, capacitors on on both of those, um, and then it has to come through a couple of logic gates. Uh, these are actually CMOS, and they have to be CMOS because uh, CMOS uses uh, very low power, so it can uh, use the low power of the that um, the crystal oscillates at. And they're also called Schmidt triggers as well, and the Schmidt trigger it will allow um, the gate to oscillate in, in a way that reduces the noise. Uh, so. When you get a low level, it, in order to change to high level, you have to it has to move the actual level has to move significantly up, and then it will suddenly switch to the high level. And then when it switches back to the low level, it won't automatically switch at just a small change. It has to uh, move significantly down, and then it will switch to the low level. So it 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 latches itself to the highs and low levels, and uh, and it's uh, much better for uh, reducing noise in in these circumstances. It's got. 10 mega, uh, mega ohm resistor across that first inver uh, Schmidt inverter and out this side you need a 100 ohm um, resistor back uh, back to over here back to the other leg of the crystal uh, and then uh, put it for another Schmidt trigger uh, because this this will oscillate but in order to get a very stable signal uh, place it uh, the signal through another Schmidt trigger oscillator. At this point, you've got a usable oscillation. So, say in the case of 25 megahertz, you'll have 25 megahertz here, which you can which you can use for whatever purpose you want. Uh, now, I'm uh, putting it through uh, counters to in order to divide the signal down. So, I've got a 16 stage counter. So, I can divide the, at this very last level. I've divided the signal by 65,536. Uh, which allows me then to display it on my cheap uh, oscill oscill oscilloscope uh, so I can demonstrate it here. Uh, so this circuit isn't required, it's just the circuit up to this point that you require. So it's only one integrated circuit. Uh, and I've got a 5 volt regulator here just because I'm going to run it from a 9 volt battery. Uh, so this is the circuit itself. So I'm going to plug the, the, the crystal into, I made it so I can swap over the crystals. And demonstrate different frequencies. So I'm going to plug the crystal in there. There's the two capacitors which you use to tune it. One picofarad seems to be fine for for all the ones the crystals I've used. Uh, there's a 100 ohm resistor and uh, the 10 meg ohm resistor which go, goes back across this. So this is the Schmidt trigger. So this is uh, um, six. There's six Schmidt triggers in here. We're only using two of them. Um, and here's the five volt regulator. And then here's two um, seven four three nine threes which are dual four bit counters but I'm using them as in total uh, 16 bit counter and I've taken out the stages here so I've got the the actual frequency which will be 25 megahertz then divide by 2 divide by 4 8 16 32 all the way down to uh, divide by um 65536 uh, so I get a nice low frequency out of here which I'll be able to see on the oscilloscope so I've got my oscilloscope running and I've got my circuit here and uh, it's driven by a PP3 9 volt battery um, I haven't got a crystal in there at the minute, but the circuit naturally oscillates a, 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 a frequency without a crystal, um, which is why you're getting uh, a readout on the display. But as soon as I put a crystal in, it should uh, change to the oscillation of the frequency of the crystal. So I'm putting a 4 megahertz crystal in first. Yeah, and so on the display of the oscilloscope, it's got like a rough frequency counter. It's not 
absolutely accurate, but it will give uh, a good uh, indication of the actual oscillation of the actual crystal. So it's being divided all the way down to the bottom, so it's 65,536 divisions. Uh, uh, and the, the output frequency according to this other scope is 61 hertz. And if you multiply 61 by 65,536, uh, it comes out at pretty much 4 megahertz. Um, but the, any area which is in there is in the frequency count on the oscilloscope because actually it's a very accurate uh, way of creating the frequency. So that will be absolutely 4 megahertz that that is creating. But so that's down at the lower end of my crystal. So 4 megahertz. Now I'm going to put in a um, 25 megahertz crystal to show the range of... Uh, the frequencies you can oscillate at uh, and that puts it up to the frequency up to 381 hertz now if you multiply that by 65,536 that should come out at 25 megahertz which is that crystal range so it's a really neat little circuit for driving crystals and creating frequencies um, that you can use and if you need to you can divide the frequency down easily with um, logic chips um, I believe that these Schmidt triggers can probably handle up to 50 megahertz crystal, but these counters won't be able to handle uh, that speed. They they won't be quick enough. And so when I put a 50 megahertz crystal in, this circuit doesn't divide it down properly. I, I can't check because I don't have this oscilloscope fast enough to check and see if the 50 megahertz is coming out of the uh, out of the driver. So it's just a guess as to whether it is. Maybe later on when I've got some more um, more accurate equipment, I can actually put a 50 megahertz crystal in and prove that but at this time uh, it certainly can drive up to 25 megahertz uh, from from this circuit